Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Japanese 101 lesson uh, 5. We're already at 5. That's as many fingers as you have on one hand. Isn't that crazy? Now, last week we talked about verbs for the first time and we learned a little bit about um, the two categories, which I will call Ichidan and Godan, and the reasons for why I'm using these words I've explained last week. Um, we also talked about the basic conjugations of Ichidan verbs. Um, these being, uh, we talked about the normal dictionary form, we talked about the negative form, we talked about the past tense, and we talked about the negative past tense. We also looked at a bit of a special verb, specifically aru, because it kind of shows up in the other verbs again. Um, this week, what I would like to do is do something similar, but now focus on godan verbs, as they are a little bit more complex, there's a little bit more to discuss, but don't despair, it's really not all bad, uh, we'll figure it out. So, for uh, godan verbs, let's start with, you know, once again, what are godan verbs? Real quick, just to review, um, since today we're going to be talking about godan, godan. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about godan. Maybe I should try and write like a straight line, huh? Maybe that would be preferential. Um, godan verbs, also called u verbs, or you know, whatever you want to call them. Uverb is like the most common other name that they have. Um, so you get these godan verbs. So as we said last week, these are like, basically it's anything that isn't ichidan is usually a godan verb. So even if you use a dictionary like uh, this one here, like Lorenzi's, and you'll see something like um, yomu, which means to read, to read, sorry, I kind of said that weird. Yomu, to read, you'll see that it says godan, okay? So especially anything that doesn't end in ru, it's it's always a godan verb, right? So if if it's not ru, um, I don't really know, let's say um, if it's, we looked at this last week as well, but basically if it's not a ru, right? Um, not ru means godan, always. And then sometimes some, some ru verbs, right? Some verbs that end in ru, are still godan. Still godan. Example um, example would be kaeru, like um, uh, kaeru to go home, right? Kaeru is godan even though it ends in ru. That's the main exact uh, exception, but there's many, many exceptions. Um, not so many that it would destroy the rule completely, but yeah. So like... Um, Kairu, right? Kairu would be one exception. To go home, kairu is a godan verb. But that's some exceptions apply. Um, that's why some, okay? It's not, it's not, there's a few, there's quite few, there's quite a few. I would argue almost many, <laughs> almost many. That's a pretty good way of um, categorizing it. But for the most part, like, it will be uh, verbs that don't rhyme in iru eru or verbs that don't end in ru at all. So many it would destroy the rule completely. Not so yeah, exactly, right? That's what I that's what I said last week, I think. So let's get back an image of that kana table that I used last week as well. Um I'm just gonna grab it real quick. Bear with me. Ooh, is my chrome crashing? Nope. Kind of. It's only half crashing. It's good to know. Um The incorrect before the rule. Yeah, I before E rule. Yeah, it's not that bad, eh? Um, here we go. So, as we looked at last week, right? Uh, we saw that plus or minus, no, actually not even plus or minus, but all verbs have to end in an U vowel sound, right? So if I grab this again, put it in here, scale this up a little. So these are um, these are the vowels. These are the the kana that we have available. So all verbs end in an u sound. So today, what we're gonna have to do is basically go all over over all the possible sounds. Um, I'm going to do this uh, once again, real quick, so that is this the right layer? I think I'm. There we go. Now it's the right layer. Um, once again, real quick, what we're gonna have to do is let's exclude you in modern Japanese. There is no you verbs, and we can exclude 
hu as well. There's no hu verbs and there's only one nu verb. Uh, what we have to add, however, is we're going to have to add a category for um, bu verbs, like yobu, that exists. We're going to have to add a category for gu as well. Um, there is no modern Japanese verbs that end in zu either. So we're good. So these are these are the endings that we're gonna have to consider today. Okay. So again, remember, godan verbs or all verbs have to end in one of these letters or one of these kana that I wrote down here. So once we go through all of these, we will have learned any possible conjugation that you can do with any possible verb. Because last week we learned all the ichidan, and then this week we're gonna learn the godan, except for the few exceptions, which I think we'll have enough time to go over today as well, which will be suru to do and kuru to come to come to a place um so let's look at these okay i will give you basically um basically like the way that this conjugation thing is going to work is that we'll just go through all of these verb endings and i'll give you an example verb for each of these endings and then we'll conjugate it okay so uh, first we will look at uh, let's look. Let's first look at how to make these verbs negative. Okay, so number one will be negative. Okay, then two we're going to look at the past tense. Past tense, and then three is going to be past negative, which isn't you know as big of an issue at that point. Past negative, because past negative, if you remember, it will be the same as always. It's like you have something that ends in nai. Right, so we can already like draw some some not foregone conclusions, but we can already like draw some like conclusions. Basically, this will end in nai. Okay, all negative verbs in Japanese will end in nai. Okay, in some form. Cabbage, hey, how are you doing? And the same goes here for past tense. This will end in ta. Okay, or da. Will end in ta or da. Okay. Ta or da makes it re already easy. And then here, the negative past tense is the same as for all the other verbs and all the adjectives and everything that we've talked about, which is you just take nai and you put it in past tense, which is nakatta. Okay, so this will just end in... You'll see it in practice, but already we can see some very simple patterns. This will just end in nakatta, okay? This will just end in nakatta. So these are already like the very, very simple patterns. This is what you'll be expecting to see, right? All negative forms will be, if they're not further conjugated, excuse me, if they're not further conjugated, all the negative forms are just going to end in nai, basically. Um, this, the same was true for ichidan verbs, if you remember. All past tenses will end in ta. Again, the same was true for ichidan verbs, ta or da. Um, this is a bit new. Uh, ichidan verbs don't have any, there's no ichidan verbs that will be something that ends in da in its past tense. That doesn't exist in ichidan verbs. It does exist in godan verbs, but it's not the end of the world. It's just a matter of adding some uh, some dakten, right? Some these tenten, um, these um, voicing marks. And then the negative past tense is always nakatta, okay? So for that, we just have to like know, if we know the negative tense, we know negative past, because all we have to do is conjugate nai at that point, okay? So, Let's, um, yeah, let's start with negative, okay? Let's start with how how do we make uh, verbs negative, okay? And for that, I will show you a very, very neat trick, okay? So let me make some space here real quick so that you can see. Um, I'm going to grab another screenshot here of this. By the way, the website I'm using, um, credit to this person. He has made some very nice kana tables in some interesting way. Um, check it out here, it's it's a, it's a GitHub. I've actually gotten into, I've actually contacted this person before and gotten his permission to use these Kana tables if ever I make something, as long as I credit him. So there you go, credit to, um, what's his, Atrebas or something? Yeah, um, credit to him. Some really nice looking Kana tables in my opinion. But then again, I like pastel colors. So, you know, what are you gonna do? Pastel colors are just nice whenever they show up. All right, let's grab this screenshot here. Um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to insert yet another piece of this kana table, this time a little bit bigger, purposefully. 
And so now, are you going to cover conjugations like obligation and condition as well? No, not today. No, that is much later. Um, seeing as this is very much a Japanese 101 series and we're only at episode five, uh, definitely not today, but definitely eventually. Which is a weird thing to say, isn't it? Definitely, eventually. But yes, we are going to cover stuff like that, definitely. Um, not today, though. At a later date. So, you're maybe... So there's probably two two groups now in chat. One group is like, ah, yes, he has brought out the Kana table with uh, the U row and the A row for a reason. And then there's the other group was like, why are you doing this? So to hopefully bring both groups on one page, I will now show you a piece of magic, okay? To conjugate the negative tense, so let's write it down here. Uh, or up here, I should say. Negative, okay? Negative. Negative. Konbanwa, konbanwa kitto katto san. Genki desu ka? To conjugate the negative, we are going to have to do what you could say is a vowel shift, so to speak. And that vowel shift is going to be from the ugyo. Ugyo, again, I mentioned this last week. The ugyo is the, the row where all the u vowel kana are, right? Everything here has a u as a vowel. And then we're going to shift it to the agyo. So agyo is every vowel that or the kana row where every vowel is an a figaro san konnichiwa konnichiwa um so how is that going to look and how is it going to manifest itself so the cool thing is um basically what we're going to do is we're taking whatever is here and we're just moving it up to a okay and then we just add nai and that's the negative conjugation and that's all it will basically be for the most part. We'll make an example for every uh, for every one, okay? Um, there is uh, some slight example uh, exceptions. For example, U will actually move all the way here to WA instead of A. You'll see how that works. Um, but everything else will just move to its corresponding A character. So if you have like a mental kana table, this should be fairly easy for you to do. Now, Let's make some examples, okay? So I said we're going to go over every sound specifically. Okay, so let's first formalize this idea. So we'll have two steps, okay? Um, step one. Step one will be um, shift uh, vowel to a. Okay, let's let's say shift to a sound. And step two will simply be add night. Okay, add night. This konnichiwa. Konbanwa, Yuki Daruma-san. Yeah, kyou mo nihonjin nihonjin gumi mo hobo zenbu, sono hobo zen hobo zenin atsumatte kita. Mm, yeah, ma mada Roke-san to Kuramu-san. I've decided just to listen and look at your notes later as I'm I'm sad because your notes are probably better than mine at this level. I'm I'm uh, glad to hear that. Uh, the notes will be there. I'm still um, I tried to work on it today, but I just I was like ah, I had like a block, um, so I'll get it done tomorrow. So I did it making lesson five about Godan verbs. That is a coincidence, but very good. I'll take it. I'll take credit for it. So we're going to learn negative conjugation in two simple steps. Shift to an A sound and then, or an A sound, I should say, and then add nai. Um, keep this in mind. Um, I'm going to delete this, but really keep this in mind. Two simple steps, shifting a vowel and then adding nai. And now let's make examples for every possible kana ending for every possible verb, um, which are neatly listed here except for what we mentioned, uh, bu, and that we don't have to cover you. So this doesn't, this is not going to show up. This is not going to show up, but instead, um, bu is going to show up. And that's, I think, it. And there's only one for new. So there you go. Um, all right. Let's start with u. So what would be a verb that ends in u? I'll show you a neat trick that you can do in dictionaries, such as uh, Lorenzi's Dictionaries now supports this as well, you can do a trick such as star u. Actually, no, there may be a tag for it as well. What would be the tag? The tag would be like uh, v5u or something. v5u? Is that right? Will I get that right? 
yeah, there you go. So, um, you have, lots of dictionaries have tags for these kinds of things. So, um, V5 means verb, Godan, five, that's why the five is there, and then U is the ending, right? Um, and I think V5B will get you boot verbs. Yeah, there you go. So you can choose your consonant. Um, no consonant is just U. So this is an easy way of finding tons of verbs that all end in U. Very simple, right? So for example, um, the first one, because why not use the first one? Chigao. Chigao means for something to be wrong. Um, Chigao, right? Chigao, to be different. Very simple verb. It's a Godan verb and it ends in U. So, our first example will be chigao. I'll note this down in a way so that we can focus nicely on the um, ending. Chiga. Chigao, okay, with an u at the end. This is the important part, but every verb ends in u. Well, in an u vowel, but not in an u cons. Well, not in. <laughs> sorry, in an u vowel, but the consonant can differ. So we can have a ku, a su, a tsu, a nu. So with this, again, um, if you go to the dictionary, the way the tag works is if you, you pick a consonant or you just pick u itself. And u itself will just bring you the u verbs. Ah, what's if? Welcome back, four months. Thank you so much. Arigatouzaimasu! So if you um, have u, you'll get the u verbs, but it, you can pick a consonant such as b, that will be the b, obviously, or uh, k will be k, because there's only, yeah, there's there's only one way to use the consonant k together with the vowel u to make a verb ending. That's kind of how the tag works. As far as I understand it, g should give you g, yeah, there you go, g. So you pick your consonant. Um, this is very, this is very programmer-like to do this, to do it that way. <laughs> Um, there you go. Let's go back to chigao. So, what are we gonna do? Remember the two steps that I talked about. What is step one going to be? Well, step one was a vowel change. The streak of my fives won't... No! Ah! <laughs> it's okay, don't worry about it. Step one will be a vowel change. So we're going from u to a. But, u being a little bit different, we move to wa instead. Okay? So first, let's do this. Okay? First move will be this vowel shift. So this is step one. I'll put a little one here. Step one. Fix that vowel. So what is it going to be? Well, now it's chigao. So what is it going to be next? It's going to be chiga. This will stay the same. Chiga wa. Chiga wa. I almost, I almost got ahead of myself there. Chiga wa. Chiga wa. All right, cool. Just noticed Mario is running. Yeah, that's my little uh, substreak thingy. So whenever someone subscribes, you'll see Mario running to his goal. And if you want to keep him from getting to his princess a little longer, then you may also subscribe, I guess. It's just a little fun thing. Chigawa, yeah, the river of blood. Hey, Gendry. Um, this is step one, okay? Now, step two is really simple, so much so that I won't even start a separate line. I will just say, plus nai. Chigawa nai, chigawa nai. So this is step two, okay? Um, I'll put a little, a little two up here. This is step two, plus nai. Easy, right? Not that hard. You can do that. Take a verb, see what kana it ends in. Does it end in u? Okay, you want to make the negative form? All right. If it ends in u, we go to the kana table and we're like, okay, u goes to wa. So we do chigawa and then we add nai. Chigawa nai, chigawa nai, not to be different. Very simple. These two steps is all you're ever going to have to do. Let's move to the next one. The next one would be ku, okay? So what would be a verb with ku that we could do? You can also suggest one if you want. Um I'll get up the dictionary now and we'll see like it's very easy. <laughs> fuku. Ah, fuku. Yeah, so fuku is a good one. Fuku can mean to wipe or iku. So iku, um, yeah, iku works as well. Yeah, iku would also work. I have to like, I was like, let's make sure there's no exceptions there. But yeah, iku works, fuku works. Let's go with iku. Why not? Iku is a pretty good word. It'll show up here really high on the list. So for those like watching... um. <laughs> the the recording there in chat someone was suggesting fuku and someone iku yeah ma ne sono chotto benkyo ma benkyo shite kita 
、勉強してきたんですからね。<笑>フック。Where is Iku? Did we go past it? Am I blind? Oh, is Iku maybe character? Maybe Iku is categorized slightly differently. That could be because of its、um, because of its past tense. That could be. So we'll get to that. Let's do Fuku instead.、Uh, there's one version of Fuku here. There's different. There's different verbs that are Fuku, but、um, we can go with this one, which means、um, to blow the wind. For the wind to blow, right? Fuku. Okay. Ikuyuku special class. Yeah, that's probably why. So for the negative tense, it wouldn't matter.、Um, but for the past tense, we'll see that it's a little bit special. But for now, let's go with fuku since it is also easily categorized as a standard godan ku verb. Okay? So let's write it down. Fuku. Fuku. That's not a great ku. Fuku. Oh, I should make the ku red because that's what we're going to focus on, okay? The white part isn't gonna, going to change. So, what do I change this ku into? Well, super simple. Step one is just going to be like, okay, here is ku. And what is in the a row? What's the corresponding character in a? Well, it's ka. Okay, so let's use that. Fuku turns to ka. Let's do like, this is really brain, like, Just turn off your brain. You don't even have to think about it. Don't really think about why, okay?、Um, this is not, not as much a matter of why. It's just, that's just what happens, okay? So, very simply, we switch off our brain. We're like, oh, ku, ka. <laughs> so, you just have to、um, visualize the kana table and be like,、um, you don't even have to visualize it. I mean, you just keep the consonant and you change the vowel, right? So, you go from ku to ka. You just go like ku. It's like one of those response games, right? I say ku, you say ka. It's just like ku, ka. That's it. Very simple.、Um, so we just go to ka. Ka. And then we add nai. Plus nai. Ka nai. Ka nai means not to blow. There you go. That's as easy as it is. Ka nai. All right. Um, let's do a little bonus bonus thingy. You say tsu and I say tsa. Wait! <laughs> There you go. Yeah, that's kind of the.、Um, but even then, the kana table helps. So,、um, as a little bonus thingy as well, we also know we have some verbs that end in gu. Okay? So let's find some of these verbs that end in gu. For example, oyogu or nugu, which may be me a little bit more fun, I guess.、Um, oyogu. Okay? Oyogu means to swim. So. Let's think very logically. What would gu turn into? Well, if I had to make a guess, right? If I had to make like an educated guess, I would probably think that something like、um, oyogu with the gu here would probably turn into oyoga, right? If, ka, if ku turns into ka, then gu probably turns into ga. It makes sense to think like that. So, oops, not red. So, oyo ga. Oyo ga plus nai. Oyo ga nai. Oyo ga nai. Not to swim. That's as easy as it is. Okay. Let's pick up the pace a little bit because this is getting repetitive. Lucky for you, isn't it? Because you don't have to learn anything new. You just have to repeat the same step over and over and over again. Um, which is what I'm going for. わかりやすい。そうですね。ふく。ふく、ふかない。泳ぐ、泳がない。簡単。す。Let's do one with す。話す。I'll just give you one. 話す。Um, to get this process done. And then we can do maybe some examples as well afterwards in chat. 話す would be to talk. 話す。To speak, to talk, to have a conversation. All right. Well, didn't show you for very long there, but. Um, don't worry about it. The point is con conjugation today. So let's write it down. Ha na su. Hanasu. Hanasu. Okay. Well, su is here. So su will turn into sa. Okay. Ha na sa. Plus nai. Hanasa nai. Easy. Simple. Totally simple. Hanasanai. Just move from su to sa. Since we're at su, I guess zu ending can't be further conjugated into negative like tabezu, tabezan. Yeah, so zu ending is already a、um, 
zoo ending is basically the same as um, it's it's the rentai wait no not rent it's the renyoke of nai kind of or it's no not really it's a negative renyoke so it's a different conjugation. So we're, we're in a different area there. Um, it's not really, like, these conjugations then don't apply in the same way. Uh, tabezu. Because the tabe part of the tabezu conjugation is actually the negative stem. And not at all the, like, it's not, it's, it's not the same. That's kind of the issue there. And there's no modern Japanese verbs really truly ending in zu itself. That's why we don't do that. Hanasanai kono tsunai da te <laughs> Very poetic. Hey, we just passed 10,000 channel views. Congratulations, Game Grammar. We have grown up so much. Thank you, guys. That's kind of cool. Song lyrics. Yeah, they sound they sound song lyricsy. Hello, Commander Hoops. Yatta. Verbs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for 13. We can talk about the tzu thing eventually. So hanasu, hanasanai. Um. Again, we don't have to talk about zu because no no verbs really end in zu. Um, again, these tabezu that's different. That's a negative conjunctive form. That is already like a conjugation that you can maybe we can look at it at some point. Um, by the way, to add zu, you would do the same vowel shift as well. So if we do the zu ending for hanasu, it will actually become hanasazu. Okay, you have to do the hanasa part as well because it's the negative stem. Okay, this um, this vowel shift that we're doing, you can refer to that as the negative stem form of a verb, because it is the it is the thing that you just add nai to and it makes the negative form. It is in Japanese it is called the mizenke. Um, me let me get it up here mizen. Mizenke. Mizenke. You don't have to know this word, but it's the nai stem. It's the stem of a word that you can add nai to, to make it negative. Okay, and functionally, um, or, or practically, it's what you get when you do this vowel shift from u to a. That's, you end up with this negative stem form. That's why I always add, like, plus nai, because you have, like, the stem, and then you add nai to the stem. Let's do uh, tsu. So uh, there's not super many verbs ending in tsu that I can easily think of, but like hanatsu would be one, or uh, tatsu. Tatsu is a good one. Tatsu. Um, so we have tatsu. Mizen. Before it happens. Yeah. So the reason why it's called mizen escapes me right now. There is a reason for it, but yeah, it hasn't. The name mizenke doesn't. Or, um, it is not inherently related to its negative name. Tatsu is nice emo. Yeah, so Tatsu that Tatsu that seriously posted, that's like for time to pass. But it's also Tatsu, so it works fine. Let's go with it. Tatsu. Uh, I should make this red. Tatsu. Okay. Shiribu-san, konnichiwa. Tatsu. Um, so here the kana table can help if you're a little bit strong, like Tatsu. So it would be Tsa, but it's not Tsa, it's just Ta. So here the kana table helps us because really it's the same jump. Tsu to ta. So tsu ta. Ta ta. <laughs> Which sounds funny, but that's what it is. Ta. Ta. Plus nai. Tata nai. For time not to pass or not to stand up. Tata nai. Tata nai. Very easy. Next, we're on a roll, ladies and gentlemen. What is the one verb that ends in nu? Give it to me. What is the verb that ends in nu? There's really only one modern verb that ends in nu, and I, you all know it. Yaku ni tatsu, yaku ni tatanai. So, ne? Shinu, yes. Everybody got it right. There you go. Shinu. Famously, basically the only modern Japanese verb ending in nu. Um, quite quirky if you think about it. Like, why is it, why is this one the only one that's left? I don't know. Um, but yeah. It's fair to say that this is like the only verb in modern use that is still there. Ah, Johannes, that one, inu, is actually not a base form. That one is inai. So inu is the same as inai, but there is one uh, inu with a different kanji that is a nu verb. They are too afraid to change it, maybe. What would they change it to? I don't know what the other ones changed to. Um, I don't know the history behind that, but nu, na. Lucky for us. Um, is the only new verb that hasn't died yet. Ho ho ho. Ha! Nice. Got him. 
Lucky for us though, even though it is a bit of a quirky verb, as far as conjugation is concerned, it is totally standard. So, we can turn off our brain once again, and we can be like, she ne, a, ne, na. Okay, let's just do the same process. She, na, nai, na plus nai. So, she na nai. She na nai. Same process. I've heard that verb. She ne, yeah, she ne is to die. She ne. She na nai de. She ne. So, she ne, she na nai. Super simple. It's the same pattern. So this is this is what I'm going for with my verb lectures lectures I call them lectures lessons let's call them lessons calling them lectures makes it, makes it gives me too much credit um, so ne goes to na um, these verb lessons I want to make these yeah to not to die exactly I want to make these as intuitive as possible and I think this is like the most intuitive way to learn these negative conjugations so uh, I made a little addendum here that there is no f but there is there is b so let's use a bu verb, such as yobu. Yobu means to call. To call, to summon, to invoke, to invite, all of these kind of things. Shinanai. You're um, missing a, a na there, that's shinai, but it would be shinanai. Which, yeah. Wakaru, wakaranai. Oh god, it all makes sense. It all makes sense. There you go, that's what I'm going for. Ibu sensei no kogi, so ne? Corgi. Yobu. Yobu means to call. Um, again, I'm repeating myself a lot. I hope you don't mind, but it's uh, these points need to be hammered home. Ah, so, so So, we use yobu as an example here. Yobu. Again, this will be red because it's our ending. Yobu. What is bu? Well, if hu turns into ha, then bu probably turns into, you know, ba, which it does. Iru wa doushi ni bunrui sareru no kana? So, ne, fudan wa doushi toshite atsukaware turu to omoimasu. I think uh, iru is usually just treated as a futsu doushi. Futsu no doushi. Yobu. Yobanai. Uh, so already doing the full conjugation. Yo, ba, nai. Yobanai. There you go. Simple enough. We're almost done. We only have uh, two more that we need to do, namely mu. So mu is yomu, for example. Yomu means to read, to read a book, to read anything. Yomu. Yomu to read. Um, so, how do we conjugate yomu? Well, nothing out of the ordinary. We take yomu, like this. Yomu, and we just turn mu into, well, would it, what would it be? Well, if mu is here and it goes up, then it will end at ma. Yomanai. There you go. There we go. Yo. Ma. Plus nai. Yomanai. Have you ever seen conjugation that is easier? Remember, ladies and gentlemen, we have one more to go, and then we will have learned how to conjugate 99.9% .9 of all verbs in Japanese into its negative. Isn't that great? Have, have any of you ever tried to, like, learn German or French? So, maybe you can compare how easy this is. Um, and maybe to do a little bit of foreshadowing, it doesn't get harder for the other forms. Um, Similar patterns as these will show up all over. Nanoka Nihonji ni wa kikatsuki mashita. So ne, iru. Ma, katsuyo teki ni wa iru wa, eh, to, regai dewa nai de shou ne. Katsuyo teki ni wa iru inai. Sono, ichidan doshi toshite. Inai, ita. It's basically standard. Um, as far as so iru is, is very standard as far as conjugation is concerned mm, Yeah, but like the whole existence part of it te iru. Well, it's also a little bit of a te iru nara chotto sono chodoshi teyu eto seishitsu seishitsu jenakute eto nanshake zokusei mo 
ついてますね。Takes getting used to the pattern, I think. Of course, yes. So today I want to show you the pattern. And then you go out into the world and you see it like a million times, and then eventually it'll be second nature. And that's the goal. Like learning near beginning.、Um, I like learning verbs near the beginning. Cook up much closer to the actual sentence. Yeah, verbs are very important. Once you feel it, <laughs> it feels good. Yeah, just feel. You start with、um, stuff like this, but what you want to move to is to just sort of be able to, you know, understand intuitively. But learning these rules can really help recognize it at first, and then once you're able to recognize it more easily, you can absorb it more easily. And then once that's possible, you will get a lot of practice done really easily. はい、とにかく私は元気だけど、最近にインターネットが割れてしまうけど、明日は直すつもりです。あ、そうですか。それはえっ、ー、と良かったですね。明日直すつもりって。いるではなくいるの方が例外。So, いらない,い,いた。いる Wait, which one is the. Which、uh, conjugation of いる要するのいる is the 例外 part? That one I don't even know. Yeah, I know the word いる means to need, but I didn't know that that would be an exception. Huh. Interesting. Last one. Let's do るる and ら Famous、uh, いるいらない例外あ、そうね。え、いやまあ、その、これ、普通の五段活用じゃないですか ?Isn't that, wait, wait, isn't that just normal? あ<笑>、uh, いやまあ、そうね、いるって、いや、I guess、見たら、いるは、その、見た目は一段同士なんだからね。Yeah, that makes sense.Okay, I understand what you mean, Shiruvu さん。I understand what you mean.Because いる looks like it should be, like, いる、like, 存在するのいるは、えー、と一段同士なんだけど、いるって、要するのいるは、えー、五段同士ですね。Yeah, that, that, I understand that. That's okay. That makes sense to me. <laughs> Sorry, I got a bit confused there. I thought we were talking about verbs that are in their category but yet are exceptions. But yeah. Sorry for the slight tangent there. So, last one.、Um, while we have it, might as well use、uh, iru. So, iru, the one that、uh, Shirubu san just posted, Uh, is actually this one. It means to, to need something. And it, it is a godan verb.、Um, so you'll see it here, categorized as a godan verb.、Uh, to need something, you know, to, to be wanted. So、um, if this is a godan verb and it ends in ru, we can conjugate it accordingly. So, a specific name for godan verbs ending with ru? No, not really. I think they're just called godan verbs.、Um, maybe. Hitsuyo, so the difference is clear, right? Yeah, hitsuyo, exactly, right? You can, if you know the word hitsuyo, then you'll be able to recognize this as the,、um, the yo in hitsuyo. There's also a、uh, word called yosuru, which also means to need, which uses the same kanji.、Um, it's a little bit more formal than、uh, iru. So let's do iru. Iru would simply be i plus ru. Iru, and we do the negative stem once again by doing i. Plus ra from ru to ra. Ira. And then we add nai. Ira nai. Ira nai. I don't need it. Ira nai. It's not needed. Ira nai. There you go. That is the negative conjugation for every godan verb that you'll ever see. Okay?、Uh, feel free to practice this on your own time, but that is, that is it. That's all you're gonna need. Okay? Now, let's do something a little bit different. Um, or let's move on to the next one. I, I hope this is clear so far. If you have questions, ask me. I'll just clean up a little bit of space here. And there we go. When are you going to continue with Learn Japanese with Pokemon Leaf Green series? Oh, that's not me. That's Tom. And、um, that's a different person doing that.、Um, I do play games, but I don't play Pokemon currently. So it's hard to say. If you want,、uh, you can ask Tom about it. He's currently,、um, if, you, if you really want to like talk to Tom about it, then、uh, he's on the Discord. But currently, he has just issues with his, with his、uh, internet and location and it's everything. Everything's a bit tricky.、Um, but yeah. So, yeah, got that. So, yeah.、Um, Next one is past tense. Okay. So, let's look at past. So, this one is going to be a little bit quicker because it's going to be more of the same. Past. Let's learn the pattern for past tense. 
Yeah, a lot of people love it a lot. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I haven't seen much of it. <laughs> I don't know that much about it. I just know it's Pokemon. I personally have no interest in Pokemon, so it's kind of, you know, you know, think of it. Think of that sentence. Think of that sentiment as you want, but yeah. Um, I will play, like, lots of different games, though. Uh, there we go. I'm taking a new screenshot. And once again, posting... <laughs> I am once again asking for your attention. Here we go. どのぐらい配信をしているどのぐらいえっと今日その I can't figure out the games too. I play, um, I play two different, no, three different games currently. Nino Kuni on your YouTube. Hey, nice. Do you like it? Nino Kuni is pretty fun. So let's do past tense. Sorry, I'm moving on, but um, I'll be doing like just hanging out afterwards. Um, so just let's just finish this lesson and then we can talk about all the other stuff. I'll be, I'll be around. Don't worry about it. Is this the right layer? No, I'm not sure anymore. No, this is the right layer. Okay. So let's do past tense. How is past tense gonna work? Past tense is gonna be a little bit trickier, okay? There's not really more to learn, but the patterns aren't as blatantly obvious to say, right? So, um, let's look at them. Once again, uh, the verbs that we're gonna have to look at are... Uh, the verb endings are going to be these. Uh, bu, bu and gu here. Good. These are these are the verb endings that we're gonna have to consider. You should have you should have um or um that doesn't really matter there, but you should use the linking the te form of uh, e adjectives there, which we're going to look at in future episodes. Alright, let's look at look at uh, let's look at past tense. So here I'm just going to give you the pattern basically, and then this is something you're gonna have to memorize. It's not that hard, but you will have to memorize this, okay? So for U, okay, U will turn into uh, small tsu and ta. So like um, tatsu will become tatta, okay? So U becomes, um, I'll make it red, small tsu plus ta. Ku, okay, ku will become uh, ita. Ita. And gu becomes ida. Okay, let's make like a little slash here. I'm running out of space. Let's change this layout. I'm not happy with this. Let's rather do this. Um, here. I think this layout is going to be a little bit more forgiving for me. U uh, uh, will become small tsu plus ta. Remember, these are all either going to be ending in uh, ta. Doesn't tatsu end in u? Wait, what? <laughs> I know good sound remember ta. Yeah, there's like a song for that. I don't have it linked here, but if you can find it, feel free to post it in chat. U will become ta. So if you have something like um, chigau, it will be chigatta. Right? Uh, yeah, chigau, chigatta. Ku will become ita. Again, this is, you have to kind of memorize this. That's just the pattern that it will adhere to. So here, an example would be kaku, to write, would be um, kaita. Kaita. They end in u sound, but they don't end in u, which is a letter. Nitpick. Tatsu doesn't end in u. It does end in u if you just consider u to be a vowel, phonetically speaking, and not a hiragana. So yeah, it depends. So seriously brings up an interesting point here. So like we have to be a little bit careful with how we talk about these things. So like an u sound doesn't necessarily constitute the kana u. So like when I say that's why I use two different methods. That's why I either write u sound. So an u sound would be all these. So these are all u sounds. When I use the word u sound, I mean all these. Um, but when I say uh, the katakana then uh, or the hiragana, then I obviously mean this, right? But this is th these are two different things because obviously all of these also have an uh sound contained in them somewhere. This is kind of the issue with kana because they're syllables instead of just um, instead of just vowels and consonants. Tsu, yeah, tsu. 
Yeah, so the vowel in tsu and u is the same. It's the same vowel. It's both an, it's an u vowel, but uh, that's a bit tricky there, of course. The te form song from Genki. There you go. Ku, um, then gu becomes tsumaranai. So, ne? Gu is um, ida. Simple enough. Just carry over these uh, dakten. That's a bit weird. Ida. There we go. Ida. An example would be nugu nuida, you know, got naked. The majority of verbs and in sin, I may be wrong though. Uh, no, so your misunderstanding there is that if you use the negative of mas, it will turn into masen. And then all negative polite verbs will end in masen. But there is no verbs in dictionary form, which is considered the standard base form, that end in sen. Actually, Again, every single verb in the Japanese language has to end in a u vowel. Uh, so these up here that I that I screenshotted, these are all the possible endings that a verb can have in Japanese in its base form. There, there is literally no others. Everything else would be considered conjugation. There you go. U um, gu ida kugu. So su is the next one. Su turns into shita. Wait, I make these white. Shita. Shita. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, there you go. So that's why uh, learning the must form first is almost a little bit confusing sometimes because you feel like everything's so complicated, but actually it's fairly simple. Tsu is um, da, tatsu, tatta. Mm. So tsu uh, is also small tsu and then ta. So I'm not going to explain what small tzu is. If you don't know what small tzu is, we can talk about it after the lesson, but it's not part of what I'm talking about today. This is sort of, if you learn about kana, you should have learned this. It's okay if you're confused by it, we can talk about it, but I'm not going to talk about it now. If anything, I'm going to talk about it in like 20 minutes once we finish this part, okay? All right. Tzu, um, nu would be nda. So, very fun, easy to remember. Yeah, there you go. Uh, nu is nda. So if we go, n turns into nda, and last, the last few bu is also nda. This is the 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 issue with uh, this pattern is that it has a few like repeated ones, which can be tricky. But once you get used to it, it's really not an issue. So this is also nda. It doesn't have as much variation. Like some of them over overlap. Um, m is also nda. Nda, sorry, red. Nda. Hey, Eugene. Susumu, susunda. So, ne? Shinu is the only common new verb, right? Yes, exactly. It's basically the only verb in modern Japanese that ends in um, nu. And lastly, ru. Ru, ru, ru. Let's roll that R. Uh, ru. Ru turns to. So, that would be like, um, you know, iru, which would be like itta. Or, um, kiru kitta. So, also, small tsu and ta. That's it. If you want, you can take a screenshot of this, or uh, if you're a subscriber, this will be in a similar fashion on the document. Um, or you listen to the song that, um, that, uh, Paula Solid posted. Basically that. This is, you're gonna have to learn this. Um, you'll see it, like, a million times. If you read anything, if you listen to any Japanese, you'll see it so many times, over and over and over. You'll learn it really quickly, believe me. If you do any sort of exposure, this will become second nature within a few weeks if you really like listen out for it. But this is it, right? So let's and let's go through and do another example for each of them so that you can like see it. Um, for example, u would be something like um, a fancy word would be like kuru. Kuru means to go crazy, to lose your mind. Um, kuru just happens to end in u, so that works for our purposes. Kuru, so it would be Kurutta, kurutta, past tense, kurutta. Ku, uh, what's a good one for ku? We had ku earlier, maybe something like utau, utatta, right? Utau, utatta. And I'm doing this really naturally, and for you, you might have to think about it more, maybe visualize the kana in your head or something, whatever helps you write it down. Um, huru. Isn't that... <laughs> 
Yeah, furu is a bit of a weird one, isn't it? Because furu also exists. But yeah, furutta would also be the same. Kaku, yeah? Kaku. Kaku would be kaita. Kaita. So from u to ita. Uh, gu, like maybe something like katsugu. Katsugu means to shoulder something or to bear something. Um, I think, yeah, katsugu is more like the more literal meaning, I think. That would be katsuida. Right? Utsuru ta. So this, ne? That's basically all of it. Um, Kemenduru, thank you for the follow. Follow, arigatou gozaimasu. Um, su is something like koros. Koros means to kill. Koros, koroshita, koroshita. Su turns into shita. Tsu would be something like tats to get up, or um, hanats to let something loose, or to shoot something off. Um, hanats would be hanatta, basically. Um, iku itta. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, Shiroba brings up a good point. Uh, we'll look at that in a bit once I have some space on the screen. Um, nu shinda bu yonda um, mu yon. The funny thing is that um, yomu to read and yobu to call will turn into the same past tense visually. So, yobu becomes yonda, but yomu also becomes yonda. That's just how it is. It's a bit quirky, but you know, that's just what'll happen. And then uh, ru, for example, um like kataru. Kataru would be katatta. Kataru means to tell a story or to tell a tale. Okay? Alright. That's past tense. That's that's all you need to know for now about past tense conjugations. Remember for ichidan verbs, it's as simple as just replacing ru with ta, and then you're done. From taberu to tabeta. So I called Harry Potter yesterday. Good one. Got him. <laughs> Wait. Actually, I don't get it. Why did you call Harry Potter? Haha. <laughs> one last thing that we're going to look at is what Shiruba mentioned before I forget. Which is... Um, iku. Okay, so Iku is a bit of a special one. Yobu, yomu. Okay, because you read Harry Potter. <laughs> so, um... Wait. Iku looks like this. Well, it looks like this if you draw the the thing a little bit, you know, nicer. Iku. A little bit nicer of a ku. And this here is an i. Iku. Iku in its past tense will actually become itta. Okay? This is an exception. It will actually turn into itta. Mo itta koto arimasu ka? Have you been there? Itta. Okay? This is an exception. You have to remember this. Because remember, if it was normal, this would be... It would turn into something like, um, like, ita or something, because ku should become ita. So it would like, ita, but this is wrong, okay? This is very, very wrong. Don't do this, okay? This is wrong. Ita. No, 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 no. It's, it's an exception. Ita is not cool. Yes, it's not cool. Cool kids don't say ita. Um, so, ita. 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 So, ne? Yes, this is a little bit of an exception. Um, however, iru, to exist, to be, um, works as an ichidan verb. So, iru, we had this earlier, um, iru, iru just is ichidan, okay, just ichidan conjugation, so it just turns into ita. All you do is you replace, you replace ru with ta, and this is to exist iru. Cool kids say yutta, so ne? Um, you replace ru with ta, and then you get ita was there, okay, or existed, or something like that. For iru to be, to exist, just ichidan conjugation, like we discussed last week. Alright, now, we only have one thing left to do, which is learn negative past tense. Oyoida sounds so strange to me. Yeah, you get used to them, really. For me, they're, they all sound normal now, but yeah, at first it can be a bit strange. Oyoida, they are correct though. Itta. You it Hey, thank you for subscribing with Twitch Prime Commander Hops. I welcome you to the sub squad. Thank you very much. Ghost Bosta. Wait, nani? Ghost Bosta. What? I don't know what that means. Uh, Shirubu san, you is not you is not an exception though, right? Because you have um, u goes to ta, right? U te itsumo. Ta ni 
Ita. I don't, this is not an exception. Oops. Right? Ita. Kore reigai ja nai de shou? Futsu no katsuyo. Um, okay, last one would be negative past. So, how do we make negative past? This is the easiest part. Uh, dot. you'd have to understand what it meant by context. Yeah, basically. Uh, so, itta can be itta okonatta. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a bit of a weird one. More context, I guess. Yeah, you just have, that one you have to know by context. Ghostbusters. Ah, uh, go, uh, ghost, it would be ghost. Ghostbusters, you would spell like this. Um, ghost, and then bastards, I think. Ghost, you can make a dot here if you want. Ghost, bastards. Like this? Ghostbusters, de show. This is a bit of a tangent. Um, let's look at uh, let's look at negative past tense, okay? Negative past. This is the easiest part. I'm gonna do this in one minute, okay? And your brains are gonna be like, wow, I actually already mentioned it. Negative past tense is super easy because you just take the negative, you know, it take negative form, negative form. Make it past. <laughs> it sounds weird, but you know what? You'll know what I mean. Make it past. <laughs> Negative form is night, right? So this will be something plus night. Well, if this is something plus night, just make it into something plus nakatta. That's all it is. Na. Um, sorry. Nakatta. And you're done, okay? Nothing, nothing else you need to know. What is the negative form of yobu? Yobanai. Okay, so what is the past tense of that? Ah, yobanakatta. Easy. No other changes needed. Take anything that ends in nai and change it to nakatta and you have negative past tense. And since all basic negative forms are just something plus nai, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about what what comes before the nai because it doesn't matter. All you conjugate now is nai into nakatta. Dare o yobu. Yeah, yeah, um... Dare o yobu, who are you gonna call? <laughs> who are you gonna call? Dare o yobu no... So, nai, nakatta. That's it, you know negative past. So we now know all four. We know the normal form, we know the past tense, we know the negative, and we know the combination, the negative past tense. Again, let this sink in. Negative past tense, take the negative that we learned first, and just change nai to nakatta, which is just the past tense of nai. That's all it is. Super simple. Hey, Meeple, long time no see. How are you doing? Okay, now let's, to finish this off, um, we'll look at the exceptions, which is going to be fast. Don't worry about it. Um, suru and kuru, okay? Suru and kuru are a bit weird, so this will be the last chapter, so to speak, for today. Um, we're just going to look at suru and kuru. These are generally considered exceptions. So let's look at them. We looked at aru last week, remember? that The other one that is a bit weird is aru, and we looked at that one last week. So, if you want to review aru, it's in the VOD. Suru and kuru is our last sort of stepping stone for today. Well, suru and kuru are already the base forms. So, how is the what is, are the negatives of these? So, uh, negative would just be... For suru, it's shinai. Okay, so let's do... Um, let's maybe do it like this. Negative is shinai. Note how it also just ends in nai, like like normal. And for kuru, it's just konai. Konai. There you go. Konai. Mostly the ko part is weird, right? The ko. Um, you have to remember that it's ko and not like kuranai or something like that. Just konai. Shanai. I'm just kidding. Yeah, exactly. There you go. And then uh, past tense is for suru it's shita oops shita and for kuru it's um kita so here we turn this into kita ah, kita ka kita again the weird part being that the first kana changes this this ku becomes a ki kita kuru kita it's a bit weird, 
Uh, you're going to have to learn it. It's not much. It's literally that. Like, this is it. Negative past tense, once again, negative past tense is easy. Once you have the nai, just conjugate nai. Negative past tense of suru is shinakatta. Shinakatta. Just change nai to nakatta. Same for kuru. Konakatta. Did not come, right? Did not come is konakatta. Like, party ni wa konakatta. He didn't come to my party. Or, um, shukudai wa shinakatta. He had he didn't do his homework. Shukudai wa shinakatta. He didn't he hadn't done his homework. Um shita, past tense. Shukudai wa shita. Shukudai shita. Shukudai wo shita. Something like that. I did my homework. Or party ni wa kita. He did come to my party. So these are these are that. That's it. We've learned verbs part two. What have we learned today? Let's review. Last week we learned about ichidan verbs and how to conjugate them. Shita no shita. Is the is the accent different than those? I don't know. Last week we learned about ichidan verbs. And we also learned how to differentiate ichidan and godan verbs. So if you don't know that or if you're a bit confused by the term ichidan and godan, I encourage you to go on YouTube and watch part um, watch the part from last week, just the newest video that I uploaded. But last week we learned how to differentiate those two and how to recognize them and what the, what it means, what those terms mean. This week we added on top of that, or also last week we learned the conjugation patterns for um, the dictionary form, the past tense, the negative tense, and the negative past tense for ichidan verbs. And this week we finished that off with learning the same four forms. I mean, the, the first one you already know, it's the one that you find in the dictionary, it's the dictionary form. So the additional three of negative, past, and negative past for godan verbs, for all godan verbs. And real quick now, we also learned the conjugations for suru and kuru, the basics, the basic ones. So um, the good news is these four forms are the essential forms. If you know these four, okay, moving on will be easy. Moving on and learning the new ones will be very easy. So these are really super, super fundamental, super basic. They're gonna, you're gonna need these again okay so these are going to show up again these patterns are going to show up there's a few more patterns that we'll have to learn we'll learn these in future episodes but for the most part this is this is the foundation okay the normal one uh, the dictionary form the past tense and the negative form these are very important and then in a bit i think i will do a verbs part three where i will finally introduce you to the must form okay that will be, um, I, I like doing it this way. First, let's learn about the base forms and then let's learn about the mass forms. So I think next week we will do verbs part three and we'll learn about mass and we might learn about te form as well. And then I will probably do an, a separate episode about te form also. Okay. But until then, I think we are done for episode five, which was verbs part two, all about godan basic conjugations. I hope you enjoyed this. If you're, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, consider subscribing and belling the bell and whatnot. Write your, um, write some conjugations, some sentences in the comments if you want to. I will look at them and I will correct them if you want. And thank you very much. For those of you on Twitch, I'll still be sticking around, so don't go anywhere. But yes, this is where I will end the recording. Thank you, and I'll see you in episode six.